What is the best game of the year? I am so confident in my answer. If I'm wrong, I'll give a thousand dollars to one of my subscribers. What makes me so confident, you might be asking? I'm on a winning streak, baby. This will be the third year in a row that I've guessed correctly. Last year, I guessed Elden Ring. The year before that, I predicted It Takes Two. I'm Michael Jordaning this right now and shooting for my three shot. I don't know how basketball works. And I'm going for three in a row. We're going to be talking about the Game Awards today, which just revealed all of their nominees. Everything from best RPG to just straight up game of the year. I've been wanting to make a video about how this year might be my favorite year in video gaming ever. And I didn't know how I was going to make that video. And then I realized we're going to be talking about all the games that came out this year as we go through this list of Game Awards. So that's kind of perfect. So this is the complete my favorite year in video gaming as well as game awards nominees and who I think is gonna win the categories. And I don't just mean AAA bangers. I'm also talking about indie gems that came out of nowhere as well as games getting revived that I didn't think we'd ever see a sequel for again. I'm looking at you Pikmin 4. Metroid Prime Remaster ended up being essentially a one for one remake of Metroid and it was amazing. Absolutely absolute curveballs like Sea of Stars coming out of nowhere and instantly solidifying itself as a old school but new JRPG gem. We can gush about more of these games as we go forward. Let's just start with the Game Awards. Most anticipated game. Well, I was going to say Hades 2. That's mine personally by a long shot. This is where you'll learn how I vote. I do think it'll be Final Fantasy. The most amount of people being excited, I think that's going to be most anticipated anticipated. I don't vote biasly. I vote for what I think is legitimately going to win. And everybody talking about hey, what well, I'm talking- Should I upgrade to the Zen Grip Pro? Should you- My guy, look at this. Look at this. It's dockable. You think- you're gonna, What are you gonna do with this? Well, that, one, that, that one's beat-em-ups colored. Well, yeah, that's pretty cool. But this yeah. is dockable, which is so much better. And- and you can flip out. Whoa. If you get one right now, they're up to 50% off. And with code beat em up, it's an extra 10%, which is 60% you can upgrade. Do you even like the satisfy grip? Huh? My guy, do I even like the satisfy grip? Do I, what did you just say to me, my guy? You could have just said yes instead of making a mess. I did make a mess, yeah. Actually, for you, Scoot, you can have this Zelda one. Because really? I, I don't need it anymore. You don't get a free one, sadly. You have to go to Satisfy. Use the link in the description below. The whole store right now is between 20 to 60% off with my code BEAT'EMUPS for that extra 10%. And I gotta tell you, the reason why I love this thing so much, it turns it into the most comfortable console I've ever held. Also, there's two slots in the back to keep games. Look, Persona 5 just hiding back there is perfect. I'm gonna put it on charge now and keep making my video, all right? Go to Satisfy. Go away. Go away. You, I actually leave Yeah, now. yeah, go okay, away. Okay, yeah, well, my bad. Best Adaptation. Oh. So Castlevania, the anime, Gran Turismo, the movie. Never watched it. Last of Us, the show, which was incredible. Mario Brothers movie. And then Twisted Metal. Okay, that's embarrassing that that's even there. I think from what I enjoyed the most, it has to be Last of Us. I think the quality was there. But Mario Brothers, I mean, that was a fantastic, fun movie. I actually really don't know. It could go either way here. I'm gonna go Last of Us, but I might actually be wrong with that. Okay, Best Multiplayer. Baldur's Gate 3, Diablo 4, Party Animal, Street Fighter 6, and Mario Brothers Wonder. This is such a tough category. It's just different vibes, right? Cooperative multiplayer, you have party minigame multiplayer, head-to-head -head fighting multiplayer. I mean, these are just such different games and genres. I think all of these excel in their own ways. I'm gonna go Mario Brothers. Best sports racing game, The Crew, Hot Wheels. I have, I don't even, I don't even... I don't even buy on even. Best sim slash strategy. Sadly, I haven't played Skylines 2 or Company of Heroes, so I'm going based on limited knowledge here. Advanced Wars reboot. I mean, it's a remake. I don't know how we feel about that. I think Pikmin 4 was more fun than Fire Emblem. I don't know if it's a better strategy game. Honestly, chances are one of the two I haven't played is probably going to win, but I can only vote on what I've played. Best family game. Disney Illusion Island, Party Animals, Pikmin 4, Sonic. When I voted for Mario Brothers Wonder 
before, in my head, I was like, I don't think it's going to win game of the year. So they're going to throw it a bone here in multiplayer and like have it win there. And then as soon as I voted for it, I was like, it's definitely in the family game category and it will definitely win the family game category. Best fighting God of Rock, Mortal Kombat 1, Nickelodeon All-Stars Brawl 2, which I just made a video on if you want to watch that. Street Fighter 6 and Pocket Bravery. I've only played Nickelodeon and I honestly think it's going to be Mortal Kombat. No, Street Fighter. That's a safe bet, I think. Best RPG. Oh my lord. Oh, it's good to see Sea of Stars in here. I hate to be that guy. If Baldur's Gate 3 is in game of the year and none of these other RPGs are, it's gotta be a better game than all the other ones, right? That's just how my brain works. Regardless, I really do feel like Baldur's Gate 3 is the best RPG here. It is by far the biggest, most mind-blowing, incredible RPG I have ever experienced where it is seemingly infinite in possibilities. Be anyone you want, do anything you want. The stories that are told from the main story to all of the side stories and the deep, rich lore, it is unbelievable that that game came out seemingly out of nowhere. Okay, best action slash adventure. Alan Wake 2, Marvel Spider-Man 2, Resident Evil 4, Tears of the Kingdom, and Survivor Jedi? I did recently on the channel review both Alan Wake 2 and Spider-Man 2 in the same video, so go and watch that if you want a better understanding on how I feel about those games, but I loved them both. All of that said, Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is one of the greatest games ever made. People are trying to knock the wind out of its sales by saying that it's essentially just Breath of the Wild all over again, that doesn't minimize its efforts or the complete package that it offers. I think for going on an adventure, you can't beat any Zelda game, let alone Tears of the Kingdom. Best action game. What are we doing here, Game Awards? Is best adventure game next? I'm so confused. Armored Core, Dead Island 2, Ghost Runner 2, Hi-Fi Rush, and Remnant 2. I have been so excited to play Remnant 2. Another, I'm guessing, incredible game to come out this year. And I'm so glad they made a sequel because the last one was so much fun. All these games are great. Hi-Fi Rush came out of nowhere. A rare <laughs> Xbox gem for the year. So much fun, so much personality, the colors, the visuals, the gameplay, the fact that it's all time to music, but in such a great, unique way. But if we want to just focus in on action and as the category itself says, primarily combat, I don't think you can look past Armored Core. I think that defines the category we're voting for here. Best VR, AR. This one's a little tough for me, not having played these two. Gran Turismo, I'm sure that's great in VR. You're just driving though. I'm looking at Horizon or Resident Evil. And I think just the pure fact that it gives you the entire Resident Evil Village game. It is that game in VR and it looks incredible and it's fun to play and it's even more terrifying. It's gotta be that. Horizon visually looked fantastic and it had fun controls, but it really felt like a tech demo from start to finish. Best debut indie game. Oh. No, I feel like it's Pizza Tower. It could be Dredge, but I feel like Pizza Tower made a big splash. Best independent game. Oh boy. Off the rip, I want to say I'm glad to see Sea of Stars win a category because it's winning this one. I will say I started Dave the Diver recently and it's a blast. It is so much fun. It's a diving game. It's a restaurant management game. It's a farming sim. It's everything. Best community game, Baldur's Gate 3, Cyberpunk, Destiny 2. I don't know here. As a Baldur's Gate fan, and I've been playing it since launch, I know about all the patches and updates they've been doing. They've been frequent. They've been communicating them all promptly, and we've known everything that's been going on with the patches and the updates for that game since launch. I don't know if that even competes to something like Cyberpunk, which everyone is saying it saved the game. I have still not dived back in. Eventually, I will. I think Cyberpunk might deserve a redemption award just for the amount of work they put in. And with the new DLC, DLC, I think it has a chance. Best ongoing. I know Fortnite is in the middle of their OG Fortnite run where they brought back the first season and everyone's jumped back on and playing it again. So I'm going to vote for that, but I don't really play any of these. Games for impact. Oh man, I have not played any of these. I actually bought Space for the Unbound in Japan. Maybe I should play it. I'm not even going to vote here because I don't know, but good luck to everybody. Innovation in accessibility. I wish it said why they were nominated. Usually this means uh, different viewing modes, audio modes, things like that for people with disabilities. It's a great category. I just don't really know much about that. Oh, 
I forgot about best performance. Ben Starr, Final Fantasy. Cameron. Oh, look at him. He's a little lightsaber. Edris Elba, Cyberpunk. Melane, Alan Wake 2. I'm happy that Alan Wake is here because the story was so good and the voice acting from everyone was awesome. Neil Newborn. Okay, well, I know who's going to win. Just put a clip of him talking in here, Zach. Uh... <laughs> Hello again. I can't help but notice that one of us is positively drenched in blood. She sounds positively demented. I love it. <laughs> of course. What fun. I'm going to f kill you. He committed to that role so hard. And it's such a joy to hear that character talk. I feel like that one is easy. Best audio design. My first go-to here is Alan Wake 2. That's the first one that jumps out to me. It's a horror game. So the sound design had to be intense and terrifying. Hi-Fi Rush is a musical-based game, so I'm sure that's in the running here. I'm gonna go Alan Wake, probably because it's fresh in my mind. I remember being really impressed by the audio while I was playing. Best score and music. No, we're here again. If we're looking at music and score as a whole, I do think everything I said about Alan Wake 2 stands, but I think Baldur's Gate's music is so catchy and so perfect. Hi-Fi, again, was based all around music, but I think Baldur's Gate out does it. But then we also have Zelda's music, which I loved, but I did prefer Breath of the Wild soundtrack. I'm gonna go Baldur's Gate. I don't take these ones too seriously because a lot of it is very subjective. Like best art direction. What I like in art, someone else might prefer something else. Tears of the Kingdom has fantastic art direction, but it is very similar to Breath of the Wild. Super Mario Brothers Wonder completely changed Mario's art direction in a way that really resonated with people. It's so charming, so cute, so fresh. Lies of P, its art direction reminds me of Dark Souls and Bloodborne with its crazy enemy designs and character designs. Hi-Fi Rush, we already talked about the art design in that game. It was the first thing that came to mind when I thought about playing it. And then Alan Wake 2 is also incredible. My vote might be Alan Wake here as well. The way everything looks, how hyper-realistic everything is, the way the cutscenes bleed into the action and the gameplay. But what really is selling me here on this winning art direction. Just the visuals of how they merged all the worlds and the hallucinations over the top of what you're playing so seamlessly. Okay. Best narrative. You know, I hate to keep voting for Baldur's Gate 3, but the reason why I think it's such a great game and it stands out this year is because it nailed so many elements. Spider-Man 2, it was a really great story with so many great moments and comic book hero moments and villain moments. Whereas Baldur's Gate is whatever story you want it to be, whatever story you want it to tell. It's your narrative. Every little piece from every character, every line delivery, every piece of dialogue is so meticulous and well thought out that whatever story or adventure you go on, you're going to have an incredible narrative. And then Wake 2, also an incredible story. And I love how meta it is. I love that Alan wrote the FBI agent into his story in the dark place. And that's why we're playing as her. Just one small taste of how meta it can be. But again, Baldur's Gate just had two too much going on. Best game direction? I know that is technically a different thing, but we're voting for all the same games here. Awarded for outstanding creative design and innovation in game direction and design. <sighs> It's a little bit broken recordy, so I'm going to keep this one short. Tears of the Kingdom has fantastic game design, but it was following the blueprints of what was set before it. Super Mario Brothers did shake things up. They did go in a different direction, but it is still Mario at its core. Marvel Spider-Man 2's innovation, I would say, is in having these two playable characters. Real innovation for me would be making it co-op. Alan Wake 2 had incredible game design, and I might even give the winner of this award if Baldur's Gate 3 wasn't. Yeah. I don't know how you direct that design and that vision, come up with all of these storylines and make it so the player can interact with all of it in any way they want and create thousands of different outcomes with over a quarter million voice lines and all these different endings and not have it crash or break or not make any sense by the end. That game direction is just unparalleled. Okay, all right. I need a big old chug of my coffee here. We're at game of the year and I said at the start of this, I was very confident 
and what would win. I really hope I'm right because I tweeted earlier today what I think is going to win. The replies are already a little nasty. I love going back and retweeting it and being like, see, I'm going to not retweet it if I'm wrong. We have six banger games here. I can't stress enough if any one of these games was in any other year, I think it would win hands down. I don't want to be mean, but I think Resident Evil 4 is the only one that might struggle in another year just because it's a remake. And I think people look at that with a little bit more scrutiny. I think we're all happy, but a little surprised that Mario Wonder even made it onto the list just because Nintendo already has a game here. And I really thought they were going to throw this bone to Xbox and put Starfield here. Even though Starfield is not a great game, it's very mid and Mario Wonder is a lot more fun and a better game. I just thought they would put Mario Wonder into a bunch of the other categories and throw Xbox and Bethesda that bone. Nope. They were pretty down to earth with it and said Mario Wonder is better. I don't want to add my bias into this too much, but comparing the two sequel games here, Alan Wake 2 and Alan Wake 2. Baldur's Gate 3 is also a sequel. I was just going by the number two. As a huge fan of both, I would give it to Alan Wake 2 out of those two games. Just because of everything about Alan Wake 2. I might be a little biased. The only way I would say Marvel Spider-Man is better is Marvel Spider-Man is at its core more just fun and joyous to play. Getting into that city and swinging around, it is fun no matter what you're doing. That said, if we look at Baldur's Gate 3 and Tears of the Kingdom. I think the fact that I've never played a Baldur's Gate before, I don't even like this genre typically, and I completely fell in love with Baldur's Gate 3 really says something. And looking at these two games, Zelda and Baldur's Gate, I think they both excel in the same area, offering unlimited and unparalleled freedom in their adventure and their own experience. And I think just based on the name of the channel, having Joy-Cons in the middle, and the fact that every video I make is about Nintendo, and I am the biggest Zelda fan you'll ever see, you would all assume what this vote is going, but you might be a little wrong because it's going to Baldur's Gate, baby! I really do feel like me more than anyone really has to justify this. And the first thing I want to say is what I said at the start of the video. I like to vote as unbiasedly as possible just based on what I think deserves to win and what is probably going to win Jeff Keighley's Game Awards. That said, I do feel like Baldur's Gate 3 offers more as an experience and a video game than Tears of the Kingdom offers. That said, I personally prefer Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> but that's so many years of nostalgia. That's me growing up with Nintendo and growing up with Zelda and now having the greatest Zelda ever made in my hands and playing that on launch day and being so emotionally attached to all the characters. But also it's the genre of game I prefer. I like action adventure games and I'm not as big on strategy games, which does speak for how good Baldur's Gate 3 is, but of course I'm going to have more fun in my preferred genre. That doesn't mean I can't see that Baldur's Gate 3 might be a little betty. <laughs> Better. Sorry, it just rhymed. Of course, that's going to be my personal gaming experience of the year, and it is my number one. But Baldur's Gate 3, just because it's not my genre, I still manage to love it almost as much as I loved Zelda, and I can just see that it's a better game technically in almost every way. Not by much, by very little. But I mean, just look at how I voted today. I gave Baldur's Gate best game direction, best narrative, best RPG. I even think it's going to win for best performances. I I think this is Baldur's Gate's year to just clean sweep the entire event. I'm very confident in my pick here that Baldur's Gate 3 is going to win game of the year. I hope all of that blabbing made sense. I always feel really bad when I don't vote for the Nintendo thing, especially when they have two in this category. And also, man, I'm going to feel so bad if Zelda wins, but I'm not voting for my favorite. I'm voting for what I think is going to win Jeff Keighley's Game Awards. Just remember that. My favorite is Tears of the Kingdom. And if it wins, I'll be screaming alongside everybody else. I want to know what you guys think, though. Let me know down below what all of your picks were. All right. Bye.